Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jason Hagensick. I'm the president and CEO of the YMCA of South Palm Beach County. Today I'm joined by Dr. Jonathan Hirsch, a certified orthopedic sports medicine surgeon for West Boca Medical Center. And today's topic is common sports injuries that an adult might experience in, in everyday activities, but also in sports related activities. So Dr. Hirsch, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us at our YMCA. And I'm gonna start off with, um, you know, our YMCA is fortunate to do a number of activities. We have adult sports, we have adult soccer, adult basketball, certainly there's group exercise classes, yoga, Zumba, power pump, you pick a creative name and we've probably done it. So in terms of sports injuries for adults, what do you see? Well, thanks for having me here, Jason. Um, what do I see? Well, you can break it up into two different categories. Uh, overuse or chronic injuries and then acute injuries. So let's take the court here, basketball. What do we see most commonly? Ankle sprains, uh, ACL tears, ligament tears of the knee due to the rapid change of direction here on the basketball court. Uh, and then we have our overuse chronic problems, tennis players, um, uh, cyclists, dancers, when they're doing something repetitive three, four times a week and they develop problems like tendonitis uh, partial tears, even full tears, things like the rotator cuff in the shoulder. Uh, and the older weekend warrior athletes see the wear and tear of life uh, happen to those uh, patients as well. Awesome. So what would you say to someone like me that uh, I might have played sports when I was younger and it's been a while since I was active in certain things. If, if I just jumped on the basketball court right now and I forget that it's been 20 plus years since I played, what would you tell me? Well, I would tell you to prepare. I would tell you that you have to understand that the human body changes over time. We're not as flexible as we used to be. We're not as fast as we used to be. And that's when things happen. So I think that gradually returning to a sport that you, you've sort of put on the shelf for 20 years is, is very important. So getting into shape, maybe cross training, go, go out running, uh, do a spin class, and then come in here and practice your basketball skills because when you fatigue early, that's when injuries happen. So if you're not really uh, aerobically in shape to play a 30 to 45 minute basketball game, you're gonna get injured because you're kind of getting tired. You're trying to push your body to do things, uh, but they won't do it. So I'm gonna be honest, thank you. I'm, uh, I might think I'm still in peak athletic condition, um, but I'll go ahead and say, maybe I've, I've slipped a little bit or two. So you told me earlier that you specialize in individuals that are 12 and up. So, you know, at my age, what kind of different injuries you might you see with somebody that's 12, 14, 16 years old that are common? So a growing adolescent has uh, growth plates. Their, their bones aren't 100% mature. So it's kind of a weak link to their skeletal system. So we may see things like growth plate fractures, either acutely falling on a or we might see a chronic stress fracture of a growth plate injury in a 12 or a 13 year old uh, volleyball player, gymnast, dancer, where they're, you know, they're playing five, six times a week. Uh, they can still tear ligaments like an ACL. Uh, they can still pull a muscle like you or I, but there are certain injuries that are really unique to the adolescent uh, that you and I won't have. And when should a parent, you know, what should process should a parent go through before they understand or before they make a decision and do I take my child to the doctor? Obviously there's some, some big signs of that, but typical injury might be a sprain or, you know, tell us kind of what a parent should pay attention to, to make the decision on when they seek medical professional help. Well, I think a lot of times in organized sport, you're not gonna get the feedback from the child that you want because they don't wanna be pulled out. So a lot of times you really have to use your eyes. You have to watch your child. Are they limping? Are they favoring a limb? And I think that if someone as an acute injury in a sport, swelling is a key to something's wrong. Uh, bruising, black and blue, within eight to 12 hours, um, something wrong. A swollen joint, a knee filled with fluid is a sign of an injury. Doesn't mean a serious injury, but I think it's something that you should basically take to a physician, uh, take to our fast track that we have at West Boca where we have sports injuries seen in a fast manner, or to an office like mine, uh, if available because uh, you really don't want to let them go back to their sport with a swollen limb. Uh, maybe it is a fracture, maybe it's just a hairline fracture, but something that shouldn't be laid upon until evaluated. And how about for the adults uh, like me again? I mean, if I've injured myself, 
what's the process that I go through to determine how severe it is and when I should seek assistance? Similar advice. I think that adults are going to be more honest with themselves. They understand when they're injured. They will self-limit where the child may not. So you're, you know, you tear up your knee today. You're probably not coming back tomorrow to play basketball. You're, you're sort of more realistic in your life. You can deal with three to four weeks off, where as a child, it's it's the end of the world sometimes. So similar advice: swelling, loss of motion of a joint, uh, bruising. Uh, Unable to weight bear on a, on a lower extremity, uh, these are signs that something, you know, may be serious, may not, that you should get evaluated. So again, in my role as the CEO of the YMCA, we work with a lot of volunteers and a lot of staff. What would you uh, encourage them to do or focus on in order to eliminate and or reduce uh, common sports injuries? Great question. I, I think that the coaches need to understand that the little athletes are just important uh, as the adult athletes. They can get injured just as easily preparation, teaching the correct skills on how to play the sport, the appropriate equipment that fits correctly, that they actually do come in and warm up, they do stretch before they go home, and, and really you know, make, it a, make it an experience that's gonna make them love the sport, but also play it extremely safely. And then obviously recognizing those that may be injured. Uh, maybe they, the kid doesn't ex complain, but really using your eyes and ears to see that injured athlete, pull them out and say, you know what, I think you need to rest, and, maybe mom or dad needs to bring in somewhere. So one more question related to YMCA members. Uh, we've talked about kids, we've talked about individuals my age. What do you recommend or what do you see with those that are a little bit older than me? I mean, if you go to our YMCA right now, you might see somebody in their 70s, 80s, even 90s using equipment. What would you say to them? Well, I love seeing that. And I think it's important for people in their 70s, 80s and 90s. Uh, they're certainly a, totally different than the last generation. They're working out and I, I think knowing their limitations, you know, our bodies have a little bit of an expiration date in the sense that we can't always do what we used to do. Um, and they're going to have different types of injuries. Um, some of them won't feel something coming and Achilles tendon pops on the tennis court. Um, but I think weight training for people in their 70s and 80s is totally doable and I totally recommend it. Um, but they just have to understand their limits and they're not 20 anymore and, and really doing it and keeping their passion alive, but understanding there are some limits to what you can do at that age. All right, so the toughest question I'm gonna to ask you, you're an orthopedic sports medicine surgeon. Correct. What's that mean? So orthopedic surgeons in general deal with the musculoskeletal system. So bones, muscles, tendons, ligaments, from head to toe. And my subspecialty sports injuries deals mostly with joint injuries, shoulder, elbow, knee, and hip. So when I'm in the operating room, most of what I do is with a camera arthroscopic surgery, treating ligament tears, cartilage tears, and things like that. Um, but the, the general uh, orthopedic realm is, you know, the whole musculoskeletal system. And you're at West Boca Medical Center. So what are some of the specialties or what's some of the things that West Boca is known for? You mentioned earlier an ortho track. Did I get that right? A fast track. Fast so track. we have two emergency rooms. We have the emergency room connected to the hospital, open obviously 24 seven. And then we have another facility a little bit south in Coconut Creek as a freestanding emergency room. It functions just like a 24 seven ER, fully staffed, all the imaging you would need, but it's not connected to the hospital. And within that system, we have, an, we have uh, organized a sort of a sports injury fast track. And what that means is if you have a minor injury, you go there, let's say you broke a wrist or sprained an ankle. One of the things that we've seen in the past is when someone leaves the emergency room, that connection between the doctor and their office is kind of broken. People spend sometimes weeks finding someone on their insurance plan or someone who has an appointment for a less than urgent, but urgent injury. Uh, so we've sort of linked that gap with a, a specialized nurse who can help each patient that comes to our fast track, then get the follow-up they need with someone like me in my office in the next, let's say 24 to 48 hours. They're kind of evaluated in the emergency room, a splint put on, x-rays taken, but they still need a follow-up. They need to see an orthopedic specialist and we have sort of a list by specialty. Is it a hand problem, a spine problem? And we have the docs sort of available in the next 24, 48 hour. That nurse may help them pick up the call, the phone, and get them an appointment in one of our offices. That's awesome. So what procedures would fall into the category of new procedures? And then also, what are you capable of handling through an outpatient procedure versus a situation where I have to be admitted? 
So most of my surgery is done arthroscopically through a camera, minimally invasively. So I'd say 99% of what I do is outpatient. We have an excellent anesthesia department that helps us do nerve blocks and different ways, techniques of making people feel nothing after their surgery. We do have a separate freestanding outpatient um, operating room uh, at West Boca where we do, where I do a lot of my outpatient procedures. They don't have to enter the hospital, it's a different building. Um, so really the advancements in my practice is what, what can we do through a camera? Through tiny little holes, we can fix large tears of the shoulder. We can do hip arthroscopy and get into the hip joint where we couldn't do that 10, 15 years ago with a camera, do a lot of work and come out and have two to three holes to close. Um, and so what we do on the inside is pretty major and then from the outside doesn't look so much, but we're able to send most, if not all of those patients home the same day. Excellent. So Dr. Hirsch, if, if someone has a question or wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? So my office is open Monday through Friday. Um, I have assistants that can help if I'm in the operating room. So we're very available. We have same day, we have next day appointments, certainly for acute injuries. Um, so we're really very accessible. Uh, I have partners in the office who do other orthopedic specialties as well. So, and we sort of have patients going back and forth depending on what's wrong with them. So we're very much available. Um, weekends we're on call, uh, so very accessible for, for questions. Well, I hope personally that I never have to pick up the <laughs> phone to call you. Same. Uh, but I wanna say how much I appreciate you joining us today, sharing some information on common sports industry injuries and what to do with them. And uh, on behalf of the YMCA of South Palm Beach County, the Peter Blum Family YMCA, I wanna thank everybody for joining us today as we talked about common sports injuries with Dr. Jonathan Hirsch. If you'd like more information about West Boca Medical Center, please visit their website, or you can also find out more about the YMCA of South Palm Beach County by visiting www.ymcaspbc.org. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. You ready to go?